and sisters, I welcome you again to this online sharing from the Word of God. My name is Jacqueline Gala and I love the Lord for he saved me. I would like to share with us from the Word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34 and I would like to read then we can pray together. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap, or store away in bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much? Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the fields grow; they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that. Not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And this is the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we honor you, for your word is true and your word is life. As we hear you speak to us, may the power of your Holy Spirit minister to each one of us, granting us understanding and wisdom and knowledge into your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Friends, I would like to share with us today on the topic, choose faith over worry. Faith over worry. I know we are living in strange times, very extraordinary times and trying moments. And we can all agree that worry has overwhelmed us and especially with the issue that the entire world is fighting with today, the coronavirus pandemic. But I would like to encourage us to just stand firm in the faith that we have in God and continue believing in our God. In today's sharing, I would like us to share and to reflect on this topic making a choice of faith over worry. And as I read in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6, we will draw this lesson from verse 25 to verse 34. But let's begin by asking ourselves, when we talk about faith, when we talk about worry, and I'm asking us to choose faith over worry, and not to, to choose worry over faith, what does the word faith mean? According to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of things we do not see. And the Bible records that the ancient, the people of old were commended for their faith, for having the surety of what they hoped for and having the certainty of the things they never saw. Faith is also a strong belief as defined in dictionaries. A strong belief, a strong trust in a deity or for our case, a strong belief in God. And elsewhere in the book of, of Hebrews, the writer clearly indicates that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So faith is a very essential uh, quality that we need to have if we are to express our relationship with God, our trust in God, we must have faith, we must believe in his power and in who he is. On the other hand, worry, defined in, a, in a, our dictionary, Oxford Dictionary, refers to a feeling of anxiety. It also uh, refers to a troubled heart, troubled heart, especially on issues that are either actual or potential problems that have not been, but you think that there might be coming, and so you begin to become so troubled, you are anxious, and that brings about worry in our lives. It is also being distressed of a, a certain issue or an issue that you foresee coming. And in the book of Matthew, where we read chapter 6, Matthew records one of Jesus' teachings to his disciples in which he called them to have faith and not allow worry to overwhelm them. The disciples were encouraged by the Lord to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, assuring them that all other things would be added to them. This it did not mean that the disciples did not need to plan for their lives. Jesus did not mean that you stop planning for your life, you stop organizing your life, because you are waiting to, for God to come and give you what you need. Not, no, that is not what Jesus meant. But he, he is actually taking the minds of the disciples and actually directing them to the right of focus, knowing that all these things that they worry about are owned by God, their Father, the creator of the universe, the one who controls every matter and every event under the heavens. Jesus continues to, to show the disciples how worry does not add any value to their lives. 
but in essence, worry draws a lot of life from them. And he points us to three things that worry would do in a person's life. Worry would only drain and, uh, and bring about or may result in sickness. It might bring sickness in our lives. Worry is something that will not add value to our lives. And that is why Jesus repeats the word, do not worry, do not be anxious. Paul talks about it also in the, the book of Philippians chapter four and verse six. I will come to that later. But Jesus clearly sh shows in his teaching that worry can actually drain energy, drain life from someone when fo focus is made on it. And we can attest to this that when we are so much worried, our bodies, our body's immunity is likely to go down. We are likely to be sick. And that is why he raises this critical question in verse 27. He asks his disciples, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? You worry about what you will eat, you worry about what you will drink, you worry about what you will wear. But when you worry, who among you can add a single hour to your life? And since we cannot or they cannot add any single hour to their lives, since we cannot do this, Jesus then asks them, why then should you worry? Why should we worry when we cannot add a single hour to our lives? The second thing that worry can do is worry focuses on temporary things, things that are perishable. But when we choose faith, faith focuses on eternal things. And this is why Jesus tells his disciples not to focus so much on what tomorrow will bring about, but focus on the one who controls tomorrow, the one who holds their future in, the, in his hands. He tells them not to worry about what they will, eat, they will eat, what they will drink, and what they will wear. He brings examples of birds which do not store, do not sow, do not reap. He also refers to the lilies of the, the fields and how beautiful they look like. And they, there has never been a beautiful thing on the face of the earth like those lilies. Even Solomon would not uh, compare to them. And Jesus says, do not worry because your heavenly father already knows that you need these things. He's drawing his disciples from, you know, the anxiety of the worldly things to focus on the owner and the giver of these things. And so Paul records in, in, uh, in his letter to the Philippians, chapter four and verse six, and he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in, in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Paul clearly showing us that worry does not add value. Worry only drains us. But what Jesus is actually calling us to focus on is to focus on the owner and the controller of every event and matter under the sun, the Lord, our God, the creator of the world and all that is in it. Worry says you are in trouble with this without these things. But faith says, God knows you need them. And so I call upon us, I urge us in these times to choose faith, to choose faith. It is very hard to see through these dark moments, but it's my prayer that we will choose faith. We will see the power of God ruling over the entire world and we will acknowledge him acknowledge his power, acknowledge his might, and we will drive away worry from us and, you know, ask God to fill us with faith. We will embrace faith in our lives and 
ask God to lift up the cloud of worry from us because it is only by believing that God is able to uh, carry us through this moment to lift this siege of the enemy over us that we will be able to see the hand of God in this nation even in our lives and in the life of the church. And I raised three, uh, two prayer requests for us to, to just help us in our moments of uh, seeking God that we may also present this request to God. One, that the Lord may lift up the cloud of worry from us. That the Lord may lift up the cloud of worry from our land. That the Lord will fill us with faith, belief, and trust in his power to deliver, to heal, and to save. And secondly, that the Lord's kingdom may come. Jesus said, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. May we seek the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the, the rulership of God to be over our land. And may God help us to have faith in our prayer to him so that he may actually come out and manifest his power even as the faithfuls like you and me seek him in prayer. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I continue to say God bless you and please continue to stay safe. Amen. <laughs>